Uh, the inspiration for the movie came from I, uh, we, Ben and I were about to film our first movie almost a weekend, and we were maybe three weeks away from starting to film that, and I went to visit Ben at work, and he <laughs> looked at me, he lit up, and he says, uh, I, I had an idea while I was driving to work, and I say, what is it? And he says, uh, I was thinking, like, well, what, if, what if I went home, and my parents had just adopted a 12-year-old? I don't know if he said 12, like adopted a, you know, like a teenager, I think was the original pitch he said. And so uh, we thought that was a silly idea, and we, he, he already knew that he wanted, if anybody was going to, if we were going to make this movie, Will Forge was that guy who was going to be a stand-in for him, and then we always were thinking that um, as far as Lou's parents would go, the, the character's parents, we didn't really know his name was Lou at the time. I always just pictured Ben's parents and Ben's family, and so that was kind of where we got some of the just sort of familial context that we started to work with in the story. Um, so basically, once we had an idea for uh, the overall script, um, Tom and I got together and tried to figure out how do we turn this idea and this character into sort of a full-length script, which proved to be a challenge because I think we had maybe half of what we wanted for a long time and had to figure out a way to sort of develop that into a full-length movie um, without making it seem, uh, I don't know, boring, I guess. We did kind of figure out eventually that if we, I think if we wrote it more for Will Forge as opposed to just this random character, it was a little bit easier to, uh, to develop ideas and to uh, bring the storyline to something that we were happy with. Or like the, what was driving the, how uncomfortable Lou was with having this other guy living, or this other kid living in his house was essentially just that he felt that he had been replaced and was irrelevant. And so, and sort of making it sim as simplified as that, we were able to sort of spin the rest of the story out of that, which is um, if you have a guy trying to validate his own existence what sort of conflicts does he run into in that circumstance and so we have like he goes uh he goes home and you know his old high school friends there's new people he comes across there's jobs there's all sorts of ways of starting a business it's all kind of searching for that validation of existing and the, him having a new brother kind of worked as a way to make him question that and then to ultimately sort of uh validate it towards the end I'd say the easiest part of production for adaptation was having people there that wanted to contribute and wanted to uh, turn this project into something great, whether that be the actors and actresses that were excited to play their character or the uh, crew members that were eager to help. I think it was really easy to have a lot of people working together and, and collaborating on um, a project with the hopes of turning it into something wonderful. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it was hectic, but it was a good kind of hectic. Um, it was kind of fun just jumping into a big mess and trying to see what I could do to help. You know, it's kind of, I got recruited kind of late into the party. But, I mean, I don't know. I enjoyed the work. I liked the whole movie business, whatnot. I mean, it was a great time. I mean, it's so chill on set, anyways, and just um, having something to do all day, every day. Like, there's always something else that needs to be done. So, just being able to be there and fill in, and do whatever, really wasn't that bad. I think the day, what did we even film that day? Whatever day I ended up with the uh, lake house stuff was really fun. Um, I thought it was a good mix of, you know, challenging to keep people sort of in character all day and also, um, you know, let people relax and, and enjoy the process. Um, I think one fun thing about that day is just you know, a lot of the stuff that we ended up filming, especially at the lake house, was very authentic. And even though it was scripted, it was... I mean, those scenes in particular, we let the characters just sort of be themselves. And there's just something that I love about seeing <laughs> Will Forge and Chris Fago and others uh, basically improv and turn a scene into whatever they want it to be. In our first movie, I think we were very married to the script. We, we went in and we thought we have to shoot the script because the script is good. And 
why would you why would you not shoot the script if the script is good? And uh, I don't think that mentality is wrong in and of itself if you have the resources to replicate what you wrote. But kind of operating at the level that we operate at, it's not really realistic to get every single thing exactly the way we pictured in our heads anyway in terms of even just casting. I mean, there's only... There are people who are available here, here, hail, uh, here. There's people who are available in our in our region uh, who are good, and they're the you know probably the right people for the project, but maybe they're not exactly who we pictured when we wrote it. You know, there, there's just various little differences, and so I think on that movie we were so married to the script that there are times that it sort of was a hindrance, as opposed to finding ways to make what we the spirit of what we had written work in the context of. Uh, who we had and what resources we had, what time, what locations, all of that. So I would say uh, adaptation, we kind of went in with a much more open uh, mentality of if we need to play around with the script, let's play around with the script, let's do that with the actors. And we tried to make it a very open sort of environment for little changes. So long as we kind of hit the same beats, we wanted to play around with it. And, um, you know, there's various scenes that it's essentially the same scene in that it does hit the same beats, it serves the same narrative function, but it looks nothing like what was scripted, uh, other than maybe the location of the characters. And so I think, I don't know, ultimately it's probably maybe 80% of what the script had, but it's 100% of the point of the script. And uh, it's, there's, there's this weird thing that you kind of start to realize where uh, there are scenes that work on the page that just don't always work uh, when you watch them because uh, part of this also maybe comes from the fact that I had written two books before we started making these movies and so I kind of I feel like I, I, I trained myself to write things that read well and I didn't necessarily have that sense of well is it gonna look as good as it is when I as, as it is good as it reads and so it's something that we kind of tried to hone on a little bit more and when you have someone like Will Forge who maybe isn't the most uh, Memorizing lines is probably not his favorite thing to do in the world. Also, that sort of lends itself to let's find a way to make it work, even if you don't like you don't have to memorize half a page of dialogue. But maybe we can get the same thing in a way that works, and maybe it's even funnier or better uh, when we get to that point. I did basically those random little jobs that you wouldn't think of until you actually have to make the movie type of deal. You know, it's like. My old video audio editing and whatnot, I kind of got to tweak some sounds, get some AD. I didn't, I guess I didn't really do much of the ADR, but uh, you know, background noises, the music, I pretty much contact musicians, tell them what we want, what we need, help them tweak that so it fits a bit better into the movie, however we want to make it work. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I did behind the scenes. Uh, I might just be it. It was a bizarre feeling. Uh, it's very weird going from being on set, shooting these couple little, couple long second scenes and segments and shots, and all of a sudden, you know, we're like watching a whole hour and 20 minute movie all of a sudden, and just seeing it go from those small little clips into a whole, like, complete motion picture is just a very bizarre, satisfying feeling. I think this edit actually went pretty smoothly, actually, when we put it together. I knew very early on I wanted to get it under 90 because it just feels like an under 90 minutes movie. We don't, I think until we have a, a, a larger canvas sort of to play with, it's mean to keep people past 90 minutes, especially if it's a smaller movie that's a little rough around the edges. So uh, our first cut of the movie, I think was like 100 minutes, maybe like 103 minutes. It was a little long and it felt a little long and just kind of finding those things. But that's a part of the process. I don't think that was especially hard. Uh, one thing that was tough was we, we did an original score on this one, which I'd never done before. And uh, we we had we went through sort of a lot of different people to try to find people who would do it uh, more or less. And the first people we got actually were the perfect people for it. And then I didn't really know how to talk to them about it in musical terms. So that was kind of there was a learning curve there. Uh, and I don't know that was kind of a little bit of a mess at first, but it turned out beautifully. So I don't really I think I, I, you look back on these things with sort of rosy colored glasses where. If it turned out okay, you kind of don't think about how terrible it was to get there. So that's kind of where I'm at with the movie in general, actually. Oh, uh, no, I'm just excited to do it again.